Hey guys, welcome back. This time we're going to be looking at EQs and compressors working together or not working together as it may be. Uh, so it's not so much of a tip or trick but more of a clarification I guess a lot of people often ask me you know whether they should have an EQ before the compressor or a compressor before the EQ and the answer is there is no right or wrong but the difference can be pretty substantial the best way of looking at it is you've got to remember that a compressor is essentially compressing it's it's restricting the dynamic range of any signal going through it so by definition it's going to essentially work against whatever you're doing in the world of eq if you run an eq before a compressor however the eq will appear more extreme on the other side of a compressor so you kind of need to be aware of of both of those situations so if, for example, you're running a high shelf uh, EQ and you're raising by, let's say, 10 dB, um, so it's a really substantial uh, EQ. If you're then running a compressor and you were getting, say, 5 dB of gain reduction, then it's that's going to be reducing even more. It's going to be now, it's going to be, say, 10 dB of gain reduction or something. Um, and it's really going to be trying to fight what you were just doing with the EQ. So if, for example, you're running a high shelf additive EQ, then you really want that EQ to be after the compressor in the chain, because otherwise it's just not going to have much of an effect. Um, vice versa, if you're uh, having, if you're, for example, uh, high pass filtering something, then it doesn't really matter so much. If anything, you kind of want that before uh, the compressor because you just don't want any of those signals to be bothered by the compressor. So if, for example, there was a, a big low frequency rumble in a, a vocal recording, so you'd high pass filtered that out, then doing that after the compressor means that the compressor is busy compressing that low frequency rumble which is not what you want so the eq needs to go before the compressor in that instance um, so as a quick example let's take a look at this uh, as i was saying in the uh, the verse over here uh let's it's already soloed that's fine I am running. so let's say for example we chucked on an eq8 and we made it a high shelf oh that's a low shelf a high shelf like that uh, in fact you know what let's just whack it all the way up and stick in a glue compressor as well so I'm gonna turn that off first and then run the glue compressor and I'll just get the settings right here to get the threshold so that we've got say I'll say like 5 dB I am running So that's about where I was saying if uh, if you imagine say 5 dB gain reduction on a compressor uh, if you have your EQ before it and it's a huge spike so let's just double check what I was saying in that argument uh, so I've set it to about 5 dB of gain reduction like this I am running. now if I was to put my EQ and get rid of the uh, glue compressor for a minute just to show that without the compressor, that is indeed a ridiculously over the top uh, high shelf. I am running. I am running. Exactly. And then if I switch the compressor on. I am running. I am you can now see there's 10 dB a gain reduction going on there. So all you're doing really by raising anything you want in the EQ here before a compressor, all you're doing is giving the compressor more work to do. So it's almost pointless. Whereas if I have the EQ post compressor, I am running. then the compressor is only doing that 5 dB of gain reduction. So it's not overworking. And at the same time, we're getting all these boosts of the highs. I 
am running. Now, another interesting thing to note as well is that if I switch both of these off, I am running, and then both on, I am running. Notice there's actually barely any raise in gain for the high frequencies, which is in this argument, that's what we were essentially trying to do, was we were trying to give the vocal much more presence um, by giving it that high shelf and raising it, what did we write, 15 dB, uh, you know, which is obviously an over-the-top example for the sake of this video. But bearing in mind, we just raised, where were we? 2k, 2 kilohertz and upwards, we just raised it by 15 dB. And applying that glue compressor after it has kind of cancelled out that raise. If you listen to, forget the, the, the overall gains and the compression of everything and whatever, if you just sit and listen to the frequencies, this is without any of them on. And then with them on. I am running. There's a bit more presence in the higher frequencies, but I'm not really hearing a huge amount compared to turn the compressor off. I am running. And suddenly that's super bright and present. Move the EQ to after the compressor. I am running. Exactly the same. Move the EQ to before the compressor. I am running. It's not really there anymore. So by having the EQ raising things before a compressor, you're basically cancelling itself out. Um, there's just no need for it. Uh, so the, the, the biggest really, and this is a general rule of thumb, I suppose, is if you're subtractive EQing, so you're taking frequencies out of a signal, then do that before the compressor, so the compressor has less work, or less to think about, um, and certainly less irrelevant signal to think about. Uh, whereas if you are raising or using additive EQ, then have your EQ after the compressor, so that, again, the compressor doesn't have to think about all those extra signals you're now boosting. Um, because otherwise, if you have a compressor after your EQ, it's just gonna be taming whatever it was that you raised in the first place. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.